What's poppin', family? Welcome back to the channel. I am Lady Nika, and with last night's episode of If Loving You Is Wrong, it was the season finale. Uh, episode 18, season 3, Behind Enemy Lines, and I ain't gonna lie, y'all know what? Tyler know what he doing. Last night showed me, mm-hmm, Tyler Perry know exactly what the hell he is doing. He give us these whack ass episodes throughout the season, and he know that he got a, a loyal fan base for the merch part. Now, some people going to come, and they going to go, but he know he got them loyal A1s from day ones like me. That's going to keep on coming back, even though we frustrated, tired, and confused as to why these storylines all be left unopened season after season. And as I was saying in my Have and Have Nots review, um, these are nighttime soap operas. And if you ever watch the daytime soap operas, you know how storylines can go on for a while. But child, Tyler be taking them too damn long. I mean, he just takes forever. It's like two and three seasons will go by, and you'll still be wondering. Like, I got questions, y'all. Like, I still want to know. Now, I told y'all my questions for having have not. So let me share with you um, how uh, this show has me thrown out. Where's Julius? Where is Tilda? How long is Joey ass going to be locked up down there to the prison? And did we forget about him? Ain't nobody going to see about him. <laughs> Child. What prayer went up on that damn mountain and buried, bitch? Girl, it's a lot of questions. And we still have yet to get some answers. But last night episode was good. It was the season finale, as I stated. And he left us with some good cliffhangers. What he did was make sure I come my black ass back here in a couple of months and be still talking about this. But you ain't had to play me all season. Because I was going to come back anyway. I retired Love and Hip Hop New York. I didn't retire any of my Tyler Perry shows. And I won't. Because y'all know I'm going to die hard. That's a hometown hero, bitch. I'm not giving up on him. It's going to take... I'm, I'm stuck to his ass like a bitch that know a man ain't no good and still stay with him. I'm right here, bitch, taking all the abuse he give me week after week when he do not give me what I need by wrapping up some of these storylines. And with that being said, let's get on into last night's episode. I had to refer to my notes because I'm going to tell y'all something. That last 10, 15 minutes shook us me. I was shook, bitch. Because I, I mean, as the story, as the show progressed last night, I saw where one of these storylines was going. But, bitch, it was one that just took me out. But we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Follow me. Come on. Let's go. Dr. Raston. Dr. Raston, she is sick of Brad, Alex, and everything that come with it. Alex has to admit Dr. Raston didn't tell her that she switched the DNA uh, like she told Brad that she had said the woman did. Brad is over it at this point. He told Alex he was, uh, it was over. Don't say nothing else to me. I gave you a chance, and you messed that chance up by lying to me again. You told me this doctor switched the DNA results, and you told me you asked her about it, and she admitted to it. Now we standing here, and you telling me this woman never told you she did any of this. You know what? I don't even care. I'm done. And he walked out. Now, Randall was on the far end of the hallway, understand me. And he was... Uh, girl, is my camera moving? Okay. Hold on, girls. Hold on, girls and boys. Technically, I'm having some queen court issues, bitch. Queen court issues. Anyway. I think I'm ready. Anyway, Randall was down the hallway on the phone trying to reach his lawyers. We know he was trying to call Larry and wasn't getting nowhere with it. But anyway, when Brad walked out, Randall come his ass up to Alex and Dr. Preston. And he gonna say, so wait a minute, hold up. Did you or did you not switch the DNA? And she looked at him like, mother, no, I did not. He said, oh, it don't matter anyway. I'm suing everybody. And she looked at him like, 
Motherfucker, make your next move your best move. Just get out of my face. You, her, Brad, all y'all get out of my face. She walked away. Now, you know Randall was gloating in Alex's face that she had lost and he had won and he's the he's the mastermind and she's just a puppy. He the, you know what I'm saying? All kinds of stuff. That's when Alex became a snitch. And I said, now, wait a minute. We've been waiting on you to be an honest hoe and you've been a lying trick since you got on here. In the moment when you could have kept your mouth closed and just dealt with your drama that you created for yourself, why you threw at uh, Marcy's name in there? She done told him that, yeah, my kid is yours, but so is Marcy. Do the math, Randall. That's your baby. And she right here in this hospital right now she was having some issues. I said she just can sneak. When we want you to open your mouth, you keep it closed. When we want you to shut your trap and go on about your business and deal with the mess that you created, you want to tell everything. Now, why you sick that man on that uh girl like that? You you ain't nothing. You know, this is all her fault. And I don't feel bad for Alex. I know some people that may feel some compassion for her, and I don't understand how. Because this all started because she cheated for almost a year with the man next door and was friends with the man's wife. In the shed behind what... Okay. He gonna take his head right on in there. Missing, missing with Marcy. She wasn't bothering him or nobody. She trying to stay calm and not lose her baby. And in, he, in there he comes. Antagonize her. Saying she pregnant with his, with, uh, with his baby. She like, nah, this Brad baby. What we gonna name the baby? Brad. Oh, I already know this. That, 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 this is my baby. Alex not already let me know all of that. He said, but uh, look here. She said, well, you know what? I ain't really your concern anymore because we divorced. He was like, what you mean we divorced? I would never sign up for nothing like that. She said, well, you did sign the papers and we divorced. Now leave me alone. He said he would never suffice, uh, uh, sign no divorce papers. Her thing was, again, you did, it's done, we through, can you get up out of him? Child, he realized Larry had tricked his ass, so he leave. We know where he headed. Kelly, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. She losing for real. <laughs> for real. Child, she crying, saying that she's a bad mom, because, you know, Justice had just left out of there. She's saying she a bad mom. She's a murderer. She can still smell his blood. All the while, Lucius is steady trying to get her to hold your girl, hold your peace, and let the Lord fight your battle. Be quiet. You can't just be up in here saying any and everything and think that it's okay. Girl, they recording you. Don't you see all the information? You just told me Carl showed you everything they had against you. And you still running your mouth. So stop running your mouth, inserting your foot. Hush. And besides, I got another visitor for you. Somebody want to see you. Going to make you feel better. And in comes Natalie. She see Kelly and she immediately knows something ain't right. Kelly then detached. She, she, she giving up. She's mentally exhausted. She just tired. Now, she gave Natalie a letter. Why she was in this meeting with her, this little visit with her. She told her, girl, just put it in your purse, read it later. It's just, I want to thank you, and, 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 and I want to thank Lucian, because y'all helping me out. She said, Nellie, I don't know how I got into this. Nellie telling her, just hold on. Just hold on, girl, to God's son, change your hand. He going to see you through this. You know, we going to get past this. Well, that's, they sitting there for so long. Of course, the visitation is over because these are sneak visits that she getting. And I, I was like, shit, hey, baby, I, baby, I ain't connected enough. But then again, I do remember a time, so I'm shut the fuck up on that. Um, um, Lucian coming there to get her, take her out of there. Take take um uh, Natalie up out of there. And um she tells Natalie and Lucian that she loved them and thanked them and then she said something that made me really, really, really start thinking. Something ain't right with Kelly. She said, I'm tired. I wanna just go back to my cell and get some sleep. Now, if you and ever went to jail, even if you know you getting out an hour later, bitch, you ain't you ain't doing no rela you don't wanna do nothing that make you feel like you trying to acclimate to the environment to which you are now in. Bitch, you sleeping? You facing murder warning, you sleeping. Okay. 
Well, Lucian didn't think nothing about it, but now look, look, look at that hook. Oh my God. I can't stay in that, and I'm not fitting to start all over again. I'm sorry about that, y'all. I ask that people be quiet when I try to do these reviews, and that is what you get. So, I'm not going to edit it out. I'm going to let y'all see that this is how shit goes every day when you be trying to be a YouTuber. So, maybe you'll have an appreciation for what we go through. Because, girl, when you don't live by yourself, it ain't that easy. Anyway. Lucian tell her that somebody gonna come and take her, uh, escort her back over to her cell, she said, fine, and, uh, he and Natalie leave, okay? But Natalie ain't settled in her spirit. She like, something ain't right, and she tell Lucian someone needs to keep a check on Allie, on Kelly. And she said, I mean, and he told her, you know, well, she's monitored 24-7. Natalie said, good. And then here come Miss Esperanza. With the bullshit. Esperanza is a selfish bitch to me. She really is. I never really did care for her character. I really don't like her now. She all up in her feelings. Because this man who she told. They was through. They wasn't messing around no more. To get on out her life. She is now upset because he ain't answering his phone. Or answering her phone calls. Never mind that Natalie is standing here saying to you. My busy with Kelly didn't go so well. You know, she not doing so good. I'm worried about her. You don't care nothing about your friend, right? You don't care nothing about her. All you care about is this piece of dick that you done put away from you ain't answering you. Basically, he not running behind you like he normally do because you told him to leave you alone. And now you upset because he ain't answering your phone calls. Girl. Girl. Even Nelly had to tell her, I ain't really got time to be focusing all on all of this right here. Because she went deep with it, y'all. What if Eddie did something to him? Girl, what would Eddie do something to him for? Well, you know, he did tell me he seen uh, Stephen leaving my house. Look, girl, ain't nobody think Eddie did nothing to that man. You tell that man you ain't want to have nothing to do with him. And he gone on by his business today. He just ain't running behind you and, and jumping to answer your phone call. That ain't something I can worry about right now. I have talked to you about this shit later. Because my mind is on my friend right now. I just ain't got it in me to deal with you and Stevens. Because that, that, ain't, that ain't nothing. And Esperanza had to take that. Mm, mm, mm. She got on my nerves. Then Brad come back in the Marcy hospital room. And he all in his damn feelings. Because he done found out that Alex done lied to him again. And he telling Marcy, I'm leaving for good. Marcy said, well, Randall was in here, too. He came in here while you was out, and he, he, you know, he know I was here because of her, and she told him that the baby is his. Brad, at this point, says, you know what? Yeah, I made the right decision. I'm going to go back to that house tonight, and I'm going to get my stuff, and I'm going to leave. And she like, where you going? He said, well, I'll come back to our apartment, our apartment, if you don't mind. She said, no, she don't mind. Then he said, well, will your boyfriend be able to be okay with me coming back? She was like, boyfriend? He said, yeah, Ian. Oh, that ain't my boyfriend. He said, well, she, he sure act like he your boyfriend. She said, no, we, I just sold him a house and we went to dinner a couple of times. Brad said, well, he very concerned about you, very protective of you. I think he like you. She was like, you, you think he do? Girl, you know that man like you because he told you he like you at that dinner table down at Pickles. Shit. You know that man like you. Oh, she gets on my nerve. Then she gonna say, dude, well, do you think he likes me enough to uh, break the law? And Brad was like, what do you mean? She said, because when Randall came in, he was adamant that he didn't sign the divorce papers. So do you think that maybe Ian forged his name on the papers? Brad's like, girl, look, it doesn't really even matter. It done went down there to the courthouse. The judge done probably put a stamp on it about to. And y'all about, you, you free. What difference does it make? And that was my point too. Why do you care? Then all of a sudden she started having these. She started hurting real bad. Doubling over. Go get the doctor. So Brad go get the doctor. And I said at that point she about to miscarriage, miscarry. And it's exactly what happened. She did. Dr. Raston told Brad later outside her room that those two tests that they were waiting on, well, one of those tests that they was waiting on would have alerted them that this was about to happen. They didn't get to it in time, and this, she lost the baby. I said, Jesus. Now, let's go back to the, the jail one more time, y'all. Let's go down here one more time. We got, one, we got two more time to come down here, but this is one of two. Esperanza. 
No, I'm working, but I always at the job having ads, ghosts, and solutions offers, and she wants to talk about uh, Stevens not answering his calls. Lucian said he on his day out. I know Lucian, but I think that maybe Eddie might have did something to him because Eddie did say that he seen Lucian coming out of my, I mean, Stevens coming out of my house. So you think that maybe that something could happen to him? I'm really worried about him. Lucian was like, Stevens a big boy. He can take care of himself. But she can't let that go. She want Lucian to call Steven. So he does. And Steven answered the damn phone. He out playing golf. He know that Lucian calling because of Esperanza because he been ignoring her calls. So Lucian hang up with him and now Esperanza and her damn feelings because she now knows that he deliberately wasn't answering the calls for her, but he answered for Lucian. So it's her he ain't trying to talk to. She told me, I see how it is. Now, don't worry about it. Thank you very much. And she walks out mad. Lucian says, see, this is why people, uh, that, you know, people shouldn't have flings in the workplace. And I said, I agree because it causes problems every time. Trust me, I know. Child, it will cause problems. Now... The next scene takes us to Lucius finding Larry in the back of that truck. And uh, he alive, y'all. He alive. We thought he was dead. But no, he probably passed out, hot, dehydrated, and beat the hell up. So they get him over to the hospital. And they didn't call Eddie to come down to the hospital to be interviewed. You know, to, to do the interview with Larry. Because Larry had said to Lucian that he was kidnapped, okay? So when... Eddie shows up. He like, man, you know, uh, kidnapping is a federal offense. It ain't bothered about it. All he know is I'm DEA and ain't shit gonna happen to me. That's the way he look at life. So they go up in them to the room. Stevens was already in there. When they asked Larry to give his account of what happened to him, he said him and some friends played a sex game and it went a little bit too far. Stevens was like, that was it, ain't no kidnap, ain't nothing. He was like, nah, I apologize for making y'all think more. it was more than what it is, but it is what it is. That's all that happened. So, Stevens said, well, I guess there's no reason for us to be here, so all three of them go to get ready to leave, but Larry called uh, Eddie to come back. I need to talk to you a few minutes. So, Stevens and Lucian leave out the room, and Larry says to him, hmm, you know I'm going to pay you back, right? Oh, I ain't sending you to jail. I ain't going to tell them what happened, but you know I'm going to pay you back. And Eddie, being his normal asshole self, is like, hm, I look forward to it. So he walks out the room, and, and Lucian and Stevens were standing right there in the hallway waiting on him. Lucian and Stevens said to each other, I think they're enjoying this shit. What was Eddie going to say? You don't need to say nothing. You know what they thinking about you because of what go on with this dude here and how they caught you. So, girl, okay. Child, he ain't say shit. He paid them dust and went on and walked off, child. I said, you best to. You had best to. Now, Randall done bust on over to uh, Sugar. He done took his sugary sweet ass on over there to Larry's office looking for him. And he encounters Ian, who ain't scared of his ass. And he don't like Randall. <laughs> he said Larry wasn't there and can he help Randall with whatever it was they brought him down here. Larry say, I mean, Randall say Larry tricked him into signing divorce papers and filed them just a few hours ago. Ian say Larry wouldn't do anything like that. That's too unethical for him. He said, uh, Randall say, man, fuck all that. I know how y'all get down, get down in this law firm. All I know is... I'm coming back in a couple of hours, and he best to be here. Ian said, well, we like threads around here. What's going to happen? <laughs> so, at that point, they standing up face-to-face -face with one another. I see that uh, Randall know who to mess with because Ian wasn't, he wasn't scared. Wasn't no pussy punk or failure in him that day. He was like, what's up? Randall backed out. I'll be back. I'll be waiting on you. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on down here so I can bush you in your ass real good around here, okay? Dr. Raston goes in and she has to tell Marcy what Marcy already knew, which is the baby didn't make it. Dr. Raston said she needed to stay a few days, but once Marcy found out she had lost the baby, she wants to go home. She's upset, telling Brad, go get the car. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So he leaves to go get the car. She said Randall made her lose the baby coming in there stressing her out. Dr. Ruston said she really wanted her to stay. I ain't staying. I'm leaving. 
So she tells her, okay, let me go get your discharge uh, papers together. And when she walked out that room, Marcy broke down, and I felt horrible for her. But at the same time, and this might sound kind of cold, I was like, girl, that was a blessing in disguise because if that baby had lived, survived, you know, and been born, Randall was forever going to be a menace in your life. He was going to aggravate you, upset you, set you off. He was going to do everything in his power to make your life miserable. So now that this baby did make it, here's the opportunity for you to start anew and maybe he'll leave you alone. Maybe. He will leave you alone. With the divorce and the loss of the baby, still don't guarantee you freedom, girl. But at least it gives you uh, a, a chance at him going on about his business. And it gives you a chance to not have to deal with him on a day-to-day -day basis. The way you are going to have to deal with him if, in fact, he had... Uh, if, in fact, you had this baby by him, child. So, I see it as a blessing. But as a mother, I can understand she feeling the loss of a child. But, girl, something is wrong with you. You can't carry babies or something, huh? You might have to go to surrogate route when you secure a man. Now, Alice at home sitting on that porch, she looking lost. Like, she just don't know what to do, okay? She done lost Brad. Randall know it's his baby. And everything is just falling upon her. And she in a daze. For some reason, she called Esperanza and was sitting on that phone talking about maybe I should give him what he want. Esperanza was like, what are you talking about? You know, give who what they want. She didn't understand. To me, that was a scene that wasn't even necessary because she immediately lied and said that the babysitter had just pulled up and she called this girl back. It wasn't no damn babysitter that pulled up. It was Randall. He pulled up in his driveway at his house. Instead of her sitting her ass there or going up in her house. Oh, no. Not Miss Alex. Mm-mm. She got to do something extreme. So she gets up, walks off her porch, goes across her yard, crosses over into this man yard, and start heading to the back of his damn house to that shed, knowing he was going to follow behind her like a puppy. And he did. He asking her what's going on, what is she doing. Now, it's bad enough you going into the same place that all of your drama started, this shed. It's even worse now because unbeknownst to both of them, as they were following, or as he was following her into the backyard, Brad pulled up and seen them headed to the backyard to the shed, and he pulled out. Or did he? Child in that shed, she decides instead of leaving the door open, she wants to securely close the door. And she started talking about she want peace. She said she tried and she she she's tired and she wanted to be done with. She said she tried he said he tried to uh be nice to her, but he can't find it in him to do that. Basically, girl, you done hurt me too. You ain't even apologized for the things that you've done toward me. You put your peoples on me, they put a noose around me, they tried to lynch me up, they took me back to the 60s and everything else. Girl, hi, I want to, you know, sometime give you a chance, but it pisses me off because I did love you and you treated me bad. And then I got to deal with Marcy and Brad, and I was like, well, wait a minute. How are you going to be in the very shed that you cheated on Marcy with, with this wench and had a baby with her, and now you saying that it bothers you that Brad... And Marcy messed around with one another. How, girl, make that make sense. Make that make sense. She started talking about she want a co-parent. I don't mind you having visitation rights. I, I mean, if you want to see him, I'll go get him right now. Instead of him flowing with that and leaving it alone, no, take your clothes off. She talking about Randall, no, but he advancing on her. She started saying no, but... It's like her mouth saying no, but her body language saying yes. When he went down and started unzipping her pants and looked like he was about to meet up with her box again with his mouth. That head went back like this. She talking about no, but that head went back. But when that head went back, that mean that body was submitting to it, okay? But what caught her attention was she smelled gas. Man, I smell gas. That brought Randall up, and he smelled it, too. They go to try to get out the shed. Baby, the shed is locked. Brad or somebody, because it could have been Marcy. Remember, she left the hospital. It could have been Marcy or Brad. We don't know who did it, but they done uh, put a barricade around across the door so they can't open this door. And then pulled gasoline around there and set it on fire. I said, bitch, the burning bed. Brad done did the burning. He said... 
You ain't going to keep playing on my intelligence like that. He sure did. So they up in there, child. Now, who did it? Like I said, it could have been Marcy. Marcy left the hospital, and she's enraged and hurt. Brad seen them headed to the back. Who killed them? Or who trying to kill them? i tell you one thing. One of them need to not come out this shed. Now, I don't give a damn at this point if it's Brad. I mean, if it's R Randall or it's Alex. One of them got to go. One of them need to be fucked up. We can't have a whole series of motherfuckers doing the the unusual, the out of the ordinary, and constantly getting away with it. Somebody need to be fucked up, Tyler. Don't come back with that bullshit. Now, over the Natalie house, she is sitting there, you know, she cleaning up around her house and her mind on her friend. You know, what's going on with my friend? What's going on with my friend? She remembered that letter. So she gets the letter out of her. She begins to read it. And when she was reading that letter, I said, suicide letter, girl. I knew it was a suicide letter when she gave it to her because it just, the way Kelly was acting was not right. Upon reading that letter, she gets on that phone. She panicking. Lucian, go check on Kelly. This is a suicide letter she gave me. Child, he drops the phone. We see him hot telling down that damn hallway to get to her cell, only to get to her cell and find her hanging. Bitch, Kelly hung herself. Ain't that some shit, bitch? She done hung herself. She done gave up on life. This man then this man done took her down and threw. She said, I can't make it no more. I can't do this shit. And she killed her. She tried to kill herself. Now we don't know if she did or not, because he did, I think he did get her down and then he started screaming for help. But yeah, baby, she was hanging. She had planned to kill herself. And she 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 tried to execute it. We'll see next season if in fact, she kills. She killed herself. I hope she didn't. I hope she didn't, man. I hope she didn't. But that was good, y'all. It was a good episode. I told you he treat us crazy, child. He be giving you. He know when to give us the good. That's smart. He know what to do to keep that audience on edge. Now, even people that say they tired of if loving you is wrong. Your damn life, you don't try to find out whether not Kelly did and whether not Marcy, I mean, Alex and they, uh, Randall get burnt up in that shit. Your life, you don't want to know. You might not watch the episode, but you're going to watch some clips and you're going to come down here and watch the reviews to find out if that happened because you want to know just like we do. But that's it, y'all. That's all I got for y'all. It's time me go get back into these books, bitch, okay? Y'all remember the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, I will... Um, in the meantime, in between time, please, God, start reading something else. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video wherever it is you share a video. I will see you guys back Saturday. Ayana, fix my life. Peace. Oh, and pray for a bitch, y'all. Please pray for a bitch. I'm nervous about this testimony. Y'all pray for me. Peace.